XMPP or the Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol, originally named Jabber, is an open communication protocol designed for instance messaging, presence information, and contactless maintenance. It is used by almost all large messaging systems such as WhatsApp, Facebook, Google Talk, and others. In this video, we'll go through the XMPP architecture, explain how it works, and finally, we're gonna show a demo using Node.js and a very beautiful XMPP server that is called eJabberD, which is encrypted by default. If you wanna learn all that stuff, stay tuned and let's just jump into it. Guys, so the first question that we always ask in this channel, not what is a technology particularly is, but why does it exist? Because that is the main reason of developing anything, right? So XMPP, this is a messaging protocol that is built because of this reason. We want to standardize messaging protocol. For the longest time, everyone was just making stuff up. Oh, some people will use UDP and with specific data structures. Some people will use TCP. Some people will use HTTP for chatting. So, okay, oh, someone in 1999 came and was like, okay, I'm going to build my own protocol and we're going to be standardized. And they happen to use XML. Yeah, XML is out of fashion these days. Nobody likes XML. But guess what? It works. It works works yeah we have some bloat associated with xml and this is like an infamous feature in xml but it's not really a big problem when you chat right like plus when you're on top of http everything is compressed by default right if you're supporting coding so that's the first thing the second thing is if you're backing as xmpp if you do go with xmpp as your chatting system protocol all of a sudden you have liked up a lot of other clients that can talk to you directly. You don't, you don't have this custom protocol that, that people uh, need to understand. It's like inventing a new language versus learning English. So if you, if you speak in English, a lot of people will understand you. Versus if you invent a brand new language, almost no one will understand you, right? People have to learn your new language. Same thing. So the final thing is just, just like email, XMPP is decentralized. And yeah, email is decentralized. It was designed to be decentralized. So and that's the architecture, right? You have a, a username at domain, right? It's very, very similar to email. And if I have an XMPP server and you have an XMPP server, that is absolutely fine. You can have two servers and I can talk to you directly even if you do not uh, belong to, the, to my server. That's how emails work, right? I can, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm under Gmail and you're under, I don't know, Hotmail, if, you're, if, there's, if there's still such a thing, right? Then we can still send email to each other. That's how XMPP was designed. Very decentralized. So let's go through the XMPP architecture. So there's a global addressing that we talked about, the user at the host name or the domain itself here, right? And there is also a slash resource where you can, oh, let me send me a message on my mobile versus send me a message on my desktop versus send me a message on my home desktop computer or office, right? And there is a, a the original name for XMPP was called Jabber ID. So that's uh, kind of legacy stuff. So J J ID is the thing. Now this is your JID. So XMPP is built on the idea of stream. So that means you can open an open tag like that stream, and then you can send messages on top of that. And yeah, every tag in XML has to have a closing tag, but that will not break the integrity of the XML. So you can still, it, it doesn't have like, you have to wait for the whole document to be sent perfectly in order to send the data. You can just stream it on. And I'm gonna show an example here. So XML streams is the basic idea of this, right? You open that tag and then you start sending uh, what we call stanzas in each element. The idea, another idea of XMPP is the negotiation of features like, hey, like, do, do you support this encryption? Do you support this particular feature? Do you support this particular protocol? You can negotiate that on top of XMPP as a feature. And then finally, the XML stanzas, where are three different stanzas that you can send, right? You can send a message, an IM message. You can send the presence, like, hey, I'm online. Hey, I'm offline. Hey, I am a peer offline, and all that stuff, right? You can 
exchange your presence and uh, status and then finally the information querying uh, aspect of this so you, this is a request response kind of a thing so if you send a query through xmpp like hey uh, give me this particular information about this particular user or, or the name or or something like you can query certain information using this and okay? and there are obviously attributes that goes with these stanzas like hey from this jid to this jid and as we discussed, this the whole thing is beautifully decentralized. Let's take an example. Client A connects to XMPP server. Client B also connect to XMPP server. Let's let's for simplicity let's say they are the same server. A sends message to B, and then A closes the stream. Let's see, let's see what happened exactly. So let's say this is my client A. This is my client B, and this is my beautiful my XMPP.com XMPP server. Okay. So now I want to connect from my client to my server and B will do the same thing and the first thing that will happen is the stream negotiation which is this tag that will be started in my XML right and as you can see it's an open tag and there's some attribute here like a at my xmpp.com that's my ID logged in here and I, I wanted to connect to my xmpp.com which is this server and I'm going to show an example which clarifies all that stuff right and then same thing will happen here, but in this case, this is, says B at myxmpp.com. And you can imagine this across multiple XMPP servers, the same exact idea. So A want to send a message to B saying, hey, we're going to create a beautiful stanza here called message to B at myxmpp.com. And then message says, hello. It's a very perfectly valid XML, right? It will be sent to the server itself and the server will change that, store it maybe for later delivery. And finally, if the client is available, we'll send it back. And then they will obviously, the, the, the XML will change based on the values. Like in this case, it's gonna show the from instead of the to because hey, you just got this message from A. Very simple thing. And then let's say client A just decided to destroy the stream. You can, you're gonna close it like that, right? Just very nicely close. And I believe you can do the same thing with JSON. Streaming is a very, very popular thing. Can you stream while maintain the integrity of your document that is the key here let's talk about transport xmpp is uh, again one of those transport agnostic by default you can build it was built on top of tcp so it was designed to work with tcp and when you spin up an xmpp server the default port is 5222 the problem with using just tcp the problem guys is that it can be blocked by firewalls. Firewalls do not like random ports like this. Like, oh, what the hell is 52222? Nah, it can't go because they will assume that it's a bad service. The XMPP community came up with a new implementation on top of HTTP. So you can host an XMPP server on just norm normal HTTP traffic, port 443 and port 80, uh, en encrypted versus unencrypted, right? This will avoid firewalls. However, think about it. HTTP is a request response system, right? It's not bi-directional as TCP. So that's the first problem that they had. So they solved this with long polling, and which I, which I talked about many times in this channel, right? So you make a request and the server only sends you a response when there is some data that came to it, right? You can't let the, the, the client say, hey, do I have a message? Do I have a message? Do I have a message? That's just silly. That's a very bandwidth consumption um, protocol all right finally let's do a demo guys so what i'm gonna do here is gonna spin up an xmpp server using docker because that's the easiest way i don't want to pollute my my server with stuff right so spin up with docker expose port 5222 to my uh, machine my public uh, host machine here and this is the service called e and e because it's encrypted by default which is awesome we're gonna create two users on my server and then we're going to create a node.js xmpp client to connect to the server and we're going to beautifully chat between the two how about we jump into it and for node.js we're going to use simple xmpp uh, client library which i loved it's a very simple and I, as i talked uh, ejabber d is actually encrypted by default using tls 1.3 which is awesome all let's jump into it all right how about we spin up my xmpp server and uh, have it hosted if you have docker you can immediately do, do this right now right so i'm gonna go ahead and do docker run give it a name ejabber d and the port that we're gonna expose is port 52222 and we're gonna map it to the internal 52222 okay and uh 
The final thing is the name of the image. It's called eJobberD-ECS, and then hit enter. And just like that, you're gonna run a Jobber instance like that. Awesome, it's ready. It's game be being built. All right, so it's listening, give me all the information. Let's keep it like that while opening a brand new window to start creating the users. So to create a user, we're gonna bash into the container itself. I'm gonna uh, the docker exec dash interactive terminal. And then we're gonna uh, the, uh, specify the docker name, which is a job or D. And then we're gonna specify the binaries that will allow us to create the user, which is inside this docker container. So this is inside the folder called bin, e jobber d c t l that's the binary itself and then we add a space and then we're gonna call register we're gonna call create an, a user called admin and then we will specify the domain which is localhost this is all already locally available so we're gonna name it localhost if you are doing this on some sort of a public server that you have a domain point to you can specify the ip address a public ip address or the domain that points to your public ip address and then finally password and then boom and just like that we have a beautiful user. Let's create another one named Hussein. So admin and Hussein. That's it. We have two beautiful users. How do we connect and consume this? There are many, obviously, clients that you can just download and connect, but we're gonna make it a little bit spicy. So we're gonna fire up Node.js. So we're gonna fire up Visual Studio Code in order to create a beautiful client that connects to my XMPP server. Let's do this. All right guys, so I have here an XMPP demo folder with an initialized NPM package is ready for us to rock and roll. So I'm gonna create um, a file here. Let's call it index.js. And uh, this will be my client that we're gonna connect to. In order to do that, we're gonna create an XMPP package that requires something called simple-xmpp and obviously we have not installed this so what we're gonna do is npm install simple-xmpp and just like that we're gonna install it right there and uh, this library is so simple guys it's it's very easy to understand so what we're gonna do is do xmpp first of all we need to connect right in order to connect, what do we need to do? We're gonna specify a JSON object. To connect, we need the obviously the GID. Who are you, right? To connect, right? And then we're gonna connect as admin in this particular JavaScript file. And let's call it admin at localhost. This tells me that, hey, this is my username and this is the domain I wanna connect to. The library is gonna use this to actually establish a connection on the port that is defined. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is obviously the password. And my password is called password, remember? That's the same thing. Very secure. The host, you can specify that. My host is localhost. And then finally the port, which is what? 5222, that's my port. And then when you actually connect, this is a promise, right? Is it a promise? I'm not sure. No, no, it's not a promise. But once you connect, there's an event that will be fired called on online. When you're online, there will be something that will be executed right here. It's gonna send you a function, let's say call it data, right? And this function will tell you that, hey, once you're online, we're gonna call this function. Let's say, hey, console.log, hey, you are online, okay? And then we can extract some information from the actual data. And I believe it's called uh, uh, connected as I believe it's data.jid.user, right? Because the data itself, you get the GID, which is the actual, but we want the user. And there are many other information from that, okay? Nice, that's good. There's another one in case of an error. So it goes like on error, let's just do error console.log something went wrong. Very simple stuff. And maybe just do this, right? Woo very shampoo stuff something went wrong and then the final one that it was the most interesting one if you think about it is on chat when someone actually sent me something and there are two parameters that you get sent here there's a from and there's a message <laughs> that makes sense well a console dot log got a message boom from 
from, right? That's how we basically print that message immediately. We're just gonna do that. We're not gonna do anything fancier, okay? Now you might say, Hussein, you, you're kind of listening to the stuff, but you didn't actually send the message, right? You can as easily send a message as do xmpp.send, right? And you specify the two. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But what I wanna do here is, I'll make um, I'll make a, a, a function here that will just send a message every I don't know every ten seconds or so right. Let's just do this and then go okay set timeout uh, call send again every every five thousand every everything. And what are we gonna do exactly? We're gonna do an XMPP dot send to who? We're gonna send it to Hussein at localhost.com. I know there's stuff, hard-coded stuff here, but we're testing anyway. So, right, we're gonna send uh, uh, th this message every five seconds to Hussein. What are we gonna, we're gonna send? Let's send hi, and then send uh, just a time. Date dot now. And, we'll, and then we're gonna print it there. Once I go online, I want to call this function send. So it keeps sending these messages. And I'm, I, I'm, the other party might not be online, but we're going to find out this, that the server actually stores these messages. So we're going to copy this the whole thing here and go and create a brand new file. Let's call it user uh, hussein.js. That's my other user. And then we're going to call this Hussein, this is my this is my other client, right? And when I go online, I want to send a message to admin. So that means I have to connect as Hussein, right? Hussein, password, the same password, the same everything. How about we test this thing, guys? Let's test this thing. Hopefully it works from this first time. No JX, this is my admin. Let's go ahead and connect. And I am connected as admin. I started sending messages every five seconds, right? Let's go ahead and open a brand new terminal. How do you do that? Yeah, like this. And then do node, what did we call it? Did we call it Hussein.js? Hussein.js. And now all of a sudden we got all the messages that have been delivered while I was offline from the admin. And I am sending the messages. I am Hussein right here, right? I'm connected and I'm receiving messages from admin. And this is my messages. Look at that. Beautiful. This is the ID, by the way. Okay. So now let's go back to admin. Is admin receiving anything? Yes, it is. <laughs> so it's working. That's how, how XMPP works. We have figured this out. Very simple stuff. And you can take this and run with it, build an actual server, build an actual messaging protocol, use this for logging. You can do a lot of stuff. And when you imp actually implement XMPP as your server, clients who understand how to talk in XMPP can connect to you directly and very simple. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button for more backend engineering, protocols, and more. Uh, I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.